Welcome to this second video for uh, Unit 4.1. In this video we're going to think about the uh, cough index. Um, in the previous video you will remember that as background knowledge uh, we need to be clear uh, what globalisation is and then we also started to think about some of the biases uh, that are present in the way that we think about globalisation and indeed the theories that we would apply to the concept of globalisation and how very much that they are western centric. We thought they're about the concept of a weird uh, wasp and that's wasp with an H in there. Um, and then also you watch the uh, dictator video from Charlie Chaplin, a uh, very famous speech. Uh, I think it's a speech that everybody should listen to because it has some important messages there. Uh, there he talks, you know, and it's a hundred years ago that this was say, said, and most, pretty much all of the stuff that he says in that video is very relevant. So if you haven't watched it already, I would suggest you go back to the previous page and watch that video. Um, if you have watched it, I would suggest you watch it through again and really try to think about what those messages are and think about how it fits into the process of globalisation and how globalisation and economic growth and uh, in cultural interaction between uh, people can be a tremendously, a tremendously strong force for good, but also it can be a force for bad. So think about those issues there. So we're going to talk about the cough index. Um, in class, we would have had a little conversation about why we use uh, indexes. So we use indexes because it helps us to get a full picture, a fuller picture of a very complex situation. So the cough index uh, measures three main dimensions of globalization. They are economic, social, and political. Now, each one of those also breaks down into sub-indices. So effectively an indice is, is a way of us using, using multiple sets of data and the data that we've chosen effectively that creates a model of what we see as important with uh, globalization. So the next couple of pages it goes through some of those subcategories, sub-indices sub there, economic globalization, social and political. It throws up another TOK type of um, type of type of question. Um, what we choose to go in to these indices in the first place, that's important. And we've talked about the concept of weird and how that could drive forward what we actually see as important and worth including. But also there's the validity and reliability of collecting the raw data in, its first, in the first place. So if you're comparing very, very different countries, there will be questions like how reliable is this data? What methodology did they use to collect this data? Um, what's the data set? Did they just record the data for one region of the country or the whole region? So we'll be digging down into the detail of detail and limitations of indices um, at a later lesson and we'll be looking at a specific examination question. So you remember from the previous video, uh, video one, we talked about the distribution of power and here basically you can see uh, that the blue bits are the most powerful countries or the countries that have the highest degree of globalization. So with those numbers, if it was 100, that's the highest level of globalization that you'd have in a country. And then it goes down all the way to zero. So an interesting here is we can talk about um, hegemonic power. And very much it is the West dominated by the United States and, and perhaps the European Union as well that maintain that hegemonic power. So again, um, you need to be clear about what hegemony is and what hegemonic power means. That's a basic thing that you need to Google to find out what that is. What I do want to focus on here, though, is some quite interesting things in the map. So we're going to focus in on the um, United Arab Emirates, Malaysia and Singapore. So they are countries that are outside Europe Europe and North America, those classically what we would cl uh, say there as more economically developed countries. There could be 
Well, there are many reasons for this, but what links those countries all together is that they are former British colonies. Therefore, they are principally English-speaking countries. So we go back to this idea of what helps, a, what, what is a globalised country. And a lot of that is surrounded by language and culture. Now, obviously, these countries have a very different uh, culture from, uh, the, uh, b b from the UK, but they do still have English as a significant language. Uh, most people in Malaysia, not all, most people in Malaysia, Singapore, the UAE, will be able to speak English because of their colonial background. In addition to that, you need to remember that if you have the, if you look at the ruling class, typically the ruling class would be educated in Europe or educated by Westerners. Not all of them, of course, it's always dangerous to make those generalizations. But then you kind of get this corporate co westernized culture coming into these into these countries and then of course you do have that cultural exchange so i'm not saying that i'm completely correct in this but if you look at it uae singapore and malaysia those countries have the historical link to the west through the british empire so maybe it's something that you'd want to discuss uh, with, with with your uh, partner in the lesson exactly what is going on there and if that is important. I think that those things that I've just talked about helps with economic flows, it helps with data flows. Um, we can go on to look at social globalisation, um, information flows, personal contacts, cultural proximity. Um, and then um, political globalisation have the British given them those countries a political uh, system that facilitates that process of globalization and um, the other thing that is very very interesting is we get lots of new technology and this new technology is really pushing forward globalization and one of those and we're going to go in to ask AI and AI is not going to let me in um, but when we ask AI that question about what Netflix has done, what ne impact Netflix has had on globalization, um, it gives a pretty interesting answer. So through um, your, your AI or chatbot, you might want to ask that question and see what suggestions it comes up with as Netflix is, uh, is influencing the process of globalization. So um, to review this video, what we've had a look at, we've had a look at the COF index. We tried to explore the idea of an indices and the limitations and problems with that and why we use indices. We will be looking at that in more detail in a future lesson. And then we tried to dig down into specific examples from the COF map of the United Arab Emirates, Singapore and Malaysia being highly globalized places and having a think about is there that link to them being former British colonies. So in the next um, video um, what we're going to talk about, um, if I can just get to it, um, we're going to talk about other globalization indices. There are other indices out there. Hopefully with these different ways of measuring globalization we can start to think about other things that may be more important but undercalculated in the COF index.